And I said, why did you switch to that? And they said, oh, it just gives us much more variety because we're a big family. We need more, more, more options. More than five double? Yeah, more than five double. Yeah, it's double five, yeah. Annyeonghaseyo, this is Mark Peterson with the Frog Outside the Well Research Center, and today is my favorite guest, Yoon Ji, and we're going to talk about names. We're going to learn about how Koreans make names, because it's really interesting, and there's a formula to it. I think you know some of this, but you might not know all of it. We'll see what happens, okay? Okay, so looking at Korean names. First of all, Koreans follow the Chinese patterns, like uh, Mao Zedong. Chiang Kai-shek, or Yi Sun-shin, Pak Chung-hee. So it's family name and then two given mm -hmm. names, right? And like Pak Chung-hee and Sing Win Ri. Oops, Sing Win Ri breaks the rule. Sing Win Ri is we westernized and he does Sing Man, Sing Man uh, first and Ri second. It should be Yi Sung Man, right? Yep. So he breaks the rule. And because of him, some people want to say Chunky Pak. But these days, most people say Pak Chung-hee. And most Korean names it goes the Korean style. They don't try to westernize it. So that, that's better. There are three parts to a Korean name, right? There's a family name. Mm -hmm. Then there's a generational name. And then an individual name. Do you have, is, is Yunji, is there a generational name for you? Dolimja. Dolimja. G is Dolimja for all of our sisters. Uh -huh. But it's not, we don't share it with anyone else in the bigger family. Oh, uh, it's just within your family? Yeah. It's not through that, the whole chokpo? No. In many Korean families, it's throughout mm -hmm. the whole chokpo. Yes. Yeah. And if it's a big, big family, there'll be two or three generational names, too. Isn't it usually the second? It syllabus? varies. It varies. Oh. Here's the thing. It can be family name, generation, individual name, or it can be family name, individual name, generation name. And the generation name switches each generation. Second, third, second, third, second, third. Is any of these more popular, more common, or it just varies? any format you mean mm -hmm. like this well most families do the alternate generation every other generation second uh, second name third name second name third name but you can't tell from looking at a name which is the generation name like hong gil dong you don't know if it's kil or dong you know if uh, e yun g you don't know if it's yun or g but your sisters are all momo g momo g, momo g. <laughs> okay now one thing important about Korean family names is that Kimmy, Park, Che, Jung, all of the names, they're not all the same. Not all Kims are the same. Mm -hmm. And they're separated by Ongguan. Ongguan. Now, some people tell me that because there's a separate Ongguan, they're really different names. That's not true. Because re in reality, uh, for the Kims, most Kims are either Kyungju Kim or Kim Hye Kim. And Andong Kim and uh, Chengdo Kim and, and such split off from Kyung Joo Kim. In fact, uh, uh, Andong Kwon split off from Kyung Joo Kim. Oh. Yeah. Andong Kwon is really Kim. From the, it's one of the Sheila princes. It was a prince that took the name of uh, Kwon. Uh, so most of the Kims are either Kyung Joo Kim. Most of them are Kyung Joo Kim or Kim Hae. Uh, Chin, I have a friend who's Chin Joo Kim. And that's Kim Hae Kim about originally. The Pongguan is the place where the first ancestor lived. Midian Pak. Now that's interesting because the first ancestor of, Midian, of the Midian Pak was Pak Kyokose and he lived in Kyungju. But somehow they say Midian Pak. But Kyungju, Kim, Kim, Ae Kim, it's where the first ancestor lived. And the Pongguan is usually a county level, mm -hmm. not the village. But there are a few places, for example, one of the Andong Kim villages in Andong calls themselves after the village. And the village is Chanjan Mao, Chanjan Dong. But they don't say Chanjan, they say Nea. They use the pure Korean. Oh. So real true Yangban will sometimes not use the Chinese like everybody else, but they'll use pure Korean. Now, kimchi is a very interesting case. There are a few others that are like that. Uh, and those are, the village name usually indicates a sub-lineage, a pa, not a true pongguan. So inside the pongguan, you have pa, sub-lineages. Okay. <laughs> no, my, my pongguan, I'd have to say, is Sweden. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Koreans have Pongguan of where the county they came from, but Americans have Pongguan of Germany or yeah, Ireland, where, or where they originally came, came from. from yeah. or... And I'm half Swedish and a quarter Danish oh. and a quarter English. So that's Yangban. 
<웃음> 북유럽에서. 음. Yeah, 북미. 북 어, 북 북유럽. Yeah. It, when you have a generational name, everyone in that generation has that same name, in theory, in the chokbo. And if it's a real big chokbo, uh, there will be two or three generational names for each segments in the in the lineage. So you can tell when you meet someone, is it Andong Kim and what's your name? You can tell what generation they are by the generation name. And the generation names use the Ohang system. Do you know the Ohang? Do you? Yeah. What are the Ohang? <laughs> 그 원자 물불. Think of the days of the week. So, uh, fire, water, wood, metal, and earth. So after Sunday and Monday, it's the five days of the uh, of the week. Now it turns out that for the characters, the simple characters for each of these ohang, those characters can be part of another character. So for the generational yeah. name. Mm -hmm. Uh, a generational name can either be a fire name or a water name or a wood name or a metal name or earth name. I found a really interesting case one time. There was a generational name. I, I met a man named Igun San, mm -hmm. an old, old man. And I found out he was a relative of someone that I know, Ihong Gu, who used oh. to be the ambassador to the United States and to oh. Prime Minister Ihong Gu. So I found out that Ihong Gu was his, this man's nephew. The old man oh. was the uncle. And so who did you hear whom? Yeah, so Lee Hun Sang, I was doing some Chokpo research and met him. And I said, well, now, how are your, you know, I, I said, what's the ohang between Lee Hun Sang and Lee Hong Gu? And he says, Hun is the generation name and Gu is the generation name. And I thought, well, where's the ohang? And he said, we don't use ohang. They use oh. Ship Gan. You could do the Ship EG as well. Now, what Ship Gan is, is the, they're called the 10 heavenly stems. The 12 heavenly branches are the the D, the animal that you know. When you go to the Chinese restaurant, you're the rat or the cow or the tiger, or, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. But this is the other system, the 10 stems. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, really? Use the 10 stems, not the, uh, not the oh, hang. Yeah. And it turns out that in, this, in their system, that Hun is a cop character. You see cop in the middle of the hun? Mm -hmm. And gu is an ul character. See, the the part of ul is, mm -hmm. the part of ku is the ul. So most families use the ohang, but here I found a family. It's a branch of the chenju e, the big family, that uses this. And I said, why did you switch to that? And they said, oh, it gives us much more variety because we're a big family. We need more, more, more options. More than five double? Yeah, more than five double. Yeah, it's double five, yeah. So, but most of them use this Ohang system that, that we're familiar with. And then finally, there's the individual character, and that can be any character that the family wants to choose, any good character. But if you go to the Changmyang Sol, <laughs> you ever been to a Changmyang Sol? No, you don't have any reason to go, but a, uh, a grandfather, sometimes in Korea, the grandfather names the child, or right, the father yeah. names mm -hmm. the child. The grandfather right, often yeah. does, right? I wish I could have named my grandchildren. But not in America. It's the father and the mother. They fight about it. Does it have say. any influence? No, no, none at all, none at all. <laughs> so, but the Changmyung So is really interesting because when you go to the Changmyung So, they are really it's a place for fortune telling, because they fix a good name if you have a good fortune. I have a series of hojok of uh, census registers. I'll, I should do a video about it sometime, where I have a, a, a whole family for for like 80 years. And toward the end of the place, there's one <laughs> there's one guy who changed his name every three years. Why would you change your name so often? Why would you change your name even once? It's for good fortune. And to have a good name, you go to the Changmyung So, and how does he know what's a good name and what's not a good name? He looks at your names and does the stroke count. And this one is 17 strokes and this one is 17 strokes. Oh, that's very bad, you know. Or, or this one is odd number. This is an even number. Oh, that's bad. Or maybe that's good. <laughs> you got two. So he can make it out however he wants to do it. Or he looks at the ohang and he says, oh, no wonder you have such bad luck. You have a fire, fire together. Yeah, you have a fire, fire, or you have a fire water and your water's putting out your fire. No wonder you can't succeed in life. No wonder your business keeps failing. You've got your, fi your water's putting out your fire. So all sorts of 
hocus pocus, <laughs> you know, magic to, to do the chongming. So, so anyway, those are some of the secrets, some of the systems for for naming in Korea. Did you learn anything? Yeah, but also I have to say it's not as common anymore, right? To have the they're getting away name. from it, and they're not relying. Koreans these days are not relying on Chinese names so much. You're seeing pure Korean names, mm -hmm. and you're seeing American names. I know a Susanna Lee, E Susanna. Sometimes, yeah. And and they'll use a name that has three syllables. The famous conductor, who's about my age, his father was a Kim, but he says I'm not going to use Chinese character Kim. I'm going to say Kum. Oh. And there's a Kum character too. Mm -hmm. It's a Kaya Gum Gum. Right. But no, this is a Kim. And and he named his son Kim Kum Nanse. Nanse, the flying bird. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of him? This one's very famous. He's a very famous conductor. Okay. He, he I was think a, I've heard of him, yes. So it fit mm, his wow. name. Yeah. So uh, I have a good friend whose uh, two daughters are named Param and Pada. Oh, I love that. And they live in Jeju. Oh. Samdado, uh -huh. Param and Pada. Uh -huh. That's a trend you see of not using the Chinese, but this is the traditional, and you still see it. A lot of people, I think over half of the society still, still, the majority still does it this way. So, anyway, I thought that our English speaking audience might be interested in Korean uh, narrative, and we're going to do one more for Koreans in Korean uh, language about what Western names are about. Okay, so we'll do that one. 그럼 이것으로 마치겠습니다. Thank we'll... you for watching and please subscribe to our professor's channel. And subscribe to the Bangtan Blondes. They're great. <laughs> okay, see you next time. Bye. Bye.